Welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna talk about a little device that I bought ages ago Well, it was summer and I had a problem. I was in my hammock in the garden and I had a really bad Wi-Fi signal So I went ahead and I bought some equipment to fix that problem and Yeah, I'm really good at buying equipment and then not um, really fixing the problem, but I, um, I needed a better Wi-Fi system at my hammock because the Wi-Fi is inside of the house and I was outside of the house I needed some way to put a Wi-Fi signal outside Well, I didn't actually talk about it because I was putting up some cameras at some point and I put up one at the corner of the house one just like this and I was talking about that I really needed a Wi-Fi signal there Pulling wire around the house is not really my favorite thing to do. So when I already pulled that one wire out there, I thought, is there any way for me to use that wire and also have the Wi-Fi signal there? And I would kind of give Ubiquiti um, a piece of free advice. If we're gonna be putting up cameras around the house, why not put a Wi-Fi access point in there as well? It has the cable, it has the network, it could be Wi-Fi access point as well. I'm just saying that would be neat. Why not? Well, you could turn it on and off if you didn't want it. I'm sure that little tiny print to put inside of the camera to also be a Wi-Fi point wouldn't add much of an extra cost. But I found the device that will make me go from that one wire that I pulled to the camera and out to, um, well, three other devices. It's a nano switch and Ubiquiti makes them themselves. Nano switch. So uh, we're gonna have a tiny look at that. So let's, let's go check it out. This nano switch was kindly um, financed by my patrons and I would like to give her a second to, um, to promote my being on Patreon. It helps me get stuff to use in my channel uh, to make interesting videos. This is not an expensive device. It's actually rather cheap. Compared to what you pay for a power over ethernet switch, this is cheap. This switch is unmanaged and it's stupid as heck. It's gonna do the job in this case um, somewhat. So let's get this out of here. It's a um, normal ubiquity box. It has some good information on the back here. A thing to note is that this switch will only use the 24 volt passive. It's not the 48 volts. And this 24 volt passive thing is only a ubiquity thing. So it's only meant for using on ubiquity products. There's a whole list of ubiquity products that it will work with. But there is also a lot of products that it will not work with. Rumors will have it that there is another one on the way with the more standard power over ethernet protocols. I haven't seen it yet, but rumors will have it. So you can pull 30 watts out of this switch. This first port in the switch is power in and ethernet in, and then you have three ports for using for different devices. And on the corner of my house where it will be able to um, to hit my hammock really nicely with a Wi-Fi signal, I would be able to, to have the connection that today goes to the camera that could go in port one. Then the camera can go in port two. I can have a Wi-Fi access point in port three. And then I have the fourth port that I could be using for something else. Probably an extra camera out there. I do actually have the extra camera as well. I purchased that kind of the same time as this one, but I haven't put it up yet. That's on my to-do list as well. So next box should be everything. Okay, um, I have had this open to, to see what this was all about. So here is the quick start guide. Um, with all Ubiquiti products, you get kind of this little quick start guide and it is rather helpful. So um, even though the text is tiny, well, they managed to cram a whole lot of good information in here. Like, well, this device will only use 1.5 watts. So you have a switch, oh, the switch, and it only uses 1.5 watts. It 
of course if you're sending power on to other devices well that's not included but it's a really cheap way to do that a four port switch 1.5 watts i don't think i've heard anyone else do that so here is the switch awesome let's see there's there are some mounting brackets down here as well there's these things i don't know bracelets powerful bracelets even one for each arm nice it's of course to mount it at a pole and it comes with one screw and yeah that's kind of a funny one and we are out of good stuff so yeah. i have no idea yet how i'm gonna mount this and i'm not gonna be mounting it in this video i just thought that wow we better get a good look at this i wanted to test this to see if it actually works so this is the box it has some dimensions yeah it's 196 0.4 millimeters times 93.5 times 32.4 millimeters i don't know why they've made it this big why does it have to be this big if we open it up which is rather hard you will see that all of this down here is just for cable management and for them to put a big fat logo in there oh and this model is the model n -S -S -W. Um, so yeah we have it here we have one power over ethernet input port as i said and we have three power over ethernet output ports it comes with leds so we can see if it works would be cool to try and take this out i haven't seen anyone take this out so i want to do something that no one else has done i removed that screw and i pushed up on this plastic and here is the tiny switch oh boy that could fit a lot this could become a lot smaller without any problems whatsoever why does that have to be that big i could fit this it's the size of a well large credit card it's not very big and there is a blue led there i love blue leds i must admit that shameful i know but well i'm a sucker for blue leds well, they have some programming pins there okay we took it apart don't turn it on take it apart so, yeah let's get that back in there there we are and um, this screw is for grounding it so that it's it's grounded um, they really like you to do that i'm not sure what it's gonna do for the overall thing but yeah I guess the next thing to do is to try and power this so we need to uh, get a really long cable and put it in my power over ethernet switch so up here is my ugly cupboard where the well the power over ethernet switch is sitting right there and there's a big fat ugly power distributor there's an additional switch because well this philips hue and this one for my heating well that uses power as well and each of them uses a power brick i'm trying to get around that but never mind i'm gonna borrow well the the connection for this wi-fi point that is sitting up here uh, this was kindly donated by sasha at some point way back and we're gonna well we're gonna be mentioning sasha again here but as i was preparing for this i realized that there was cold air coming in through this tube which uh, I've made so that I can pass cables on to the outside so uh, yeah I just found a plug for that now that we're at it uh, heat loss right there so we're gonna borrow that that cable comes from there it goes down here it goes into port port that one so we'll unplug that that's port one, two, three, four, five. We probably have to go and configure that so that we don't send too high of a voltage out that way. So I'm just gonna make a little string around a, a well a pipe here so that if I fall over the cable in the living room, well I will ruin the cable, the piping, and the switch. That's well usually how that goes isn't it so we have that popped in but i'm gonna go and check what port 5 is configured at to configure ubiquiti devices you need the ubiquiti unify controller 
and my Unify controller is running on this Synology box up here. It's running under Docker and I did a fairly good video on actually installing that and it has been running flawlessly on that. So um, yeah, just wanted to say that. So here is the Unify network controller thinky and it complains that some device has been unplugged and yeah, I, I have a general idea what happened there. So let's see the devices. Um, it's it's missing that access point. That's just weird, isn't it? Uh, not really. We need to go to our PoE switch there. Uh, we can see out here that port number five is, well, it's not configured right now. So let's check port five and it did that. I found where we have to configure that. It's profile override. Profile override, we can say PoE off, 24 volt passive, that's the one we need. Or right now it's PoE plus, which is too new. I'm sure that it would probably manage this itself, but let's just put it to 24 passive, or oh, 24 volts passive, guess the rest is okay. And it tells me that port number five is now running 24 volt passive. I can see the wattage going out the other devices like the cameras, they use 2.4 to 8 watts, well, 2.2 to 2. Point, oh, almost nine watts. So that is kind of cool. So with that small step for mankind, I think we are ready to pop this in and see what happens. I'll tilt it so that you get a better view let's pop and it lights up see we get green lights there we get that awesome blue light i don't know it's it's more blue inside but well it has a nice blue light there so, awesome we're ready to pop something in so what should we pop in i know that this camera is compatible that will work so let's start with that We have done, I have done a couple of videos on this camera, so we're not gonna go over it. There are, if you search for Ubiquiti on my channel, you will find quite a few videos on different stuff. So let's just open this up. And this is, this is the mounting and this is the camera. So we can just have an ethernet cable here. These cameras are only 100 megabit. Um, they don't use a gigabit connection. This is um, this is gigabit port in, and you get three one gigabit ports switched out. So let's pop this in. Um, I don't want to configure this. We're just gonna see it light up or do something. I'm expecting. So that was port one, two, there. Yeah, we can see the LEDs lighting up in there. So that is working. And I guess it's booting. So let's put that to the side and see. Yeah, uh, we also got a connection on the communication there. You can see that second LED has lit up in there. I have another device here. Um, I talked about Sasha and Sasha has been sending me a lot of his old ubiquity stuff. And this is another really old ubiquity um, access point and this was the one that i was thinking about mounting out on my uh, corner of the house because um it's not really for outside i don't think but uh, then again if it if it suddenly didn't work anymore well it wouldn't be uh, a disaster but this is one of ubiquity's really old ones and they don't support it anymore and you're not able to control it using the ubiquity network control or thinky anymore but it also says that it's powered with 48 volts there are 48 volts half an amp so i am not expecting this to work but i thought that we should just give it a try if it if it stops working well we we became that much smarter today so let's pop it in and see what happens There, nothing yet, nothing. I do believe that it lights up if it's okay. 
So yeah, let's let's give that a second. Another thing that Sasha also sent me is this Pico station. It's kind of the same thing. It's an old Ubiquiti product and it's out of service and um, they stopped supporting it this one i flashed in another video I, I put some other firmware on it so instead of it being controlled by the ubiquity controller it now has its own little web page that you can go in and you can configure stuff so here it says that it's for 48 volts but i do believe that i saw that it also came with a here it came with a 24 volt brick it says 24 volts there so i think we're just going to give it a try i can see that this access point is not working at all it's not it's doing nothing so i think we'll just steal the cable from that that was a no-go let's put this up i think we need to mount that antenna just to not screw anything up this would be cooler to have it on the end of the house anyway. We just want to see it power up really. Okay. It's powered up. So that is kind of cool, right? A camera and a Wi-Fi access point powered through one cable coming in. I kind of like the idea of that. And it still has that one port left over for the already existing camera out there. So here I was and I was gonna be bragging about that now I could see how much power this uses and I can't. So that's a bit of a shame. Um, but then again I came up with another idea because down here on that PoE switch out there, there is two SFPs and they're not in use. And I do actually have some adapters for that so I can convert those to I could go and put in fiber optic cables to my data center from there. That, I believe that's port number one that goes to the data center. And uh, yeah, it's configured to PoE, but not using it. Should probably turn that off. Um, but that could go through the SFPs. And, and I have another one. This one goes, port three here is also going to somewhere that is not using PoE. Uh, so I have those two ports and I could free up some ports so that would probably that's probably what I'm gonna be doing so trying to make this look good for thumbnail I should have used smaller cables one cable coming in and powering the switch and in this case two devices I don't believe that I have any more devices that will work on here available at the moment the Pico station here is kind of cool because it's it's for outdoor use and it will do very nicely for my hammock uh, problem up there. The camera um, is gonna be together with another camera so that's gonna be great. So what do I think about this? I think they could have gone with a way smaller box. They could have made this print half as big so you could kind of, well it could have been twice as high up here so you could kind of have the box this size instead if they had uh, conserved space a little better i don't know why it has to be this big that, that's kind of irritating because it's gonna be it's gonna be a big box to mount under my roof somewhere so this video was sponsored by my patrons and i would very much encourage anyone who can spare one or three dollars a month to, um, to go join me over at Patreon. For $3 a month, you get an extra weekly video of me telling you what I did this weekend, what videos you will be getting this next week. You get to test the new stuff that I have come up with. Like right now, Patreons know about that my Playhouse has a store. They have been helping me in testing that. And well, you would have known that a month ago if you had been on Patreon. Do go join me over at Patreon. And some of this equipment was sponsored by Sasha, who is also a Patreon. So thank you very much to Sasha and thank you very much to all of my Patreons. And thank you very much for watching. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.